So before we even get started, my challenge to you is let's seek and listen to God's Word and see what He's trying to challenge you this morning that we can take into our week. So naturally, I grew up in a very strong Christian home. I mean, my family was so Christian, they homeschooled me. <laughs> and, uh, and, and it was great. From the get-go, I always knew God existed, and I love that. But I remember it wasn't until I was 16, and I was now in New Zealand at a Christian camp, and there was a speaker there, and he was challenging us to look at our relationship with God and say, is your relationship based on your parents' faith or your own faith? And I just remember feeling really convicted. And so I decided in that moment that I was going to rededicate my life to the Lord at 16. And that was the moment where I changed my pursuit of God and that personal relationship as more of an adult, where I started making choices to, to serve more and to do my own devotions. And it was just a real big turning point for me. And I remember it so distinctly because it was also the first time I encountered the Holy Spirit. But looking back over my short little testimony there, I feel like I can relate to Jacob. And it brings me to my first point, is Jacob's first and foremost relationship with God was that he was the God of his ancestors. If we, if we look at his family line, Jacob comes from a very strong line of biblical men. See, Jacob always acknowledged that God was good and faithful, not just for him, but for his ancestors as well. He always wanted to acknowledge that God has been there for him and his family throughout all of time. For some of us, we may not have grown up in a Christian home. Maybe we came to faith through a friend or a partner or you're the first one that you know. It doesn't matter if you've come from a good line, a bad line or a line that's never existed. Right now in this moment, we all have a chance to start our own faith legacy. We all have that chance right now to think about our future descendants and think, how are they gonna look back onto my faith journey? Why don't we start that legacy today? Reflect on yourself. How is my kids right now going to be seeing my legacy? Are you where God wants you to be? And that can be a really hard question to ask. But are you where God wants you to be? Because I can tell you right now, I've been in moments where I haven't acted on it. That I've heard from God, but I'd never acted on it. We all have those moments. But my, my biggest encouragement is let's pursue God. Let's make sure that our pursuit of our personal relationship with Him is the foremost in our lives. I want to encourage you is to continue to pursue it. And the way we continue to pursue it is by in fixing and maintaining that personal relationship with God. Because without that first and foremost personal relationship with God, that we're not speaking to God, how can we expect Him to speak to us? So my, my thing is, is hearing the three ways that Jacob has encountered God through his life, it, it, it reminds me of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You see, today in today's world, we can experience those three relationships with God as well. We can, uh, encounter th this God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit in our everyday life. And some of us, we may have started that relationship already. And as we're reflecting on these uh, relationships with Jacob, maybe we're lacking or missing one. Maybe we haven't actually discovered that there was, there's another way we can take our relationship to God with, onto the next level. But I want to encourage those who have started that relationship and you maybe have stopped or have plateaued on a pursuit, so let's start up that pursuit again. Let's engage with the Lord again. How does that look? It means finding a, a Bible study that works for you. It means finding time to pray to God and not just when you need Him, but all the time. So whatever that looks like for you, let's start up that pursuit again.